In this video, we're going to look at how to stabilize shaky footage. I have here the stabilizing project you can find in the chapter 16 folder. This original comp we're not going to touch. This is the original footage, and here's how I shot it. I was super zoomed in. It was kind of one of those spur of the moment things, and so it was really shaky. Really, really shaky. Look at that thing move. That's terrible. No camera operator am I. So let's go over to the uh, two stabilized composition. What we're going to do is we're going to fix my terrible camera work by stabilizing this footage. Here's how this works. What we do is we go to the window menu and we open up the tracker. We then tell the tracker that we want to stabilize motion. In the next couple movies in this chapter, we'll be looking at tracking motion. For now, we're going to click stabilize motion. And here's how this works. It opens up the footage in the layer panel. The colorizing effects I added to this footage are removed temporarily so we can work just on the footage. We also get this track point thing. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closely here. Now here we have two little boxes essentially. We have the feature region. This is where you should put the feature that's going to be tracked. And then you have the search region. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor inside this center box. And I'm going to move it to uh, an object that I know will be pretty stable, or at least that I want to be pretty stable throughout the entire length of the composition. This little branch looks pretty good. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that this inside box encompasses the entire object that we're going to have tracked. That's basically what's going to happen here. It's going to stabilize the footage by finding some common element that should be stable and then stabilizing it. So I'm telling After Effects, or I'm telling the tracker, that I want this branch to be pretty much be stable the entire time. So the bird's beak, for example, would not be a good thing to use for tracking. The contrast would be good, so it'd be good in that sense, but it's always moving, so it'd be bad. This chain link fence in the background would be great because it should be stable, but the contrast probably isn't strong enough for the tracker to be able to track it consistently. Now we need to click and drag on the outside box here. This is again is the search region. And this basically indicates the distance that will be the farthest this object will go between frames. So if your footage is really jerky, it's just all over the place, and you probably want a bigger search region. If we just have some modest shaking, which I think is pretty much the case here, just some light shaking, then I don't think we need to worry about it going much farther than this away from the original object from frame to frame. Again, you don't have to make this outside box as far as it will ever go because it's going to track this object and it's going to move with it. This just has to be the greatest distance it will ever jump in one frame. And it's always a good idea just to zoom in and double check and make sure that your feature region encompasses the entire object and a couple of pixels on the outside as well just so it gets a good track, just so it knows what it's looking for. And then we're going to zoom back out here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to click this button that looks like play. This is really the analyze forward button. And what it's going to do is it's going to track the footage now. And what you want to do before you start doing this is you want to make sure that this box is following that object. If it ever starts drifting, you got to stop and start over again. You got to back up and then fix the mistake. Let's go ahead and try it and see what we got. Okay, it's going with it. It's moving with it. Everything looks good. It looks good, and then it finished without any problems. Now again, if there were problems, we could move our current time indicator back in time to where it started drifting, adjust the search and feature regions, and then click Analyze Forward again. If it gets messed up, again, you don't have to start from scratch. You just have to go back to the point where it started getting messed up and fix it from then on. So it looked like the tracker tracked the entire time. That's good, that's what we wanna see. And once we're done, go ahead and click Apply. This will apply the tracking adjustments to the X and Y dimensions, or just the X or just the Y dimensions, to the position property of this layer. So I'm gonna click OK. And essentially what it has done, if we go and select the layer and press the letter U to see all of its keyframes, is that it has adjusted the anchor point of the object to compensate for the shaky footage. So let's say on the second frame, the picture shifts two pixels to the right. Well, this is basically compensating for it, moving it two pixels to the left so that the object that we tracked is consistently in the same spot. Now, because it's basically moving the layer around to make up for my shaky footage, you're gonna have these kind of jumping borders as we'll see when we preview this. Let's see what we have. So now as we preview this, the footage looks remarkably better. Unbelievably stable compared to what we had before. As a matter of fact, you can see all this waving around. This is how shaky the footage was before. 
Now the downside of this is because the edges are all messed up, you'll probably need to put this in a smaller composition or you'll need to mask off those edges or something else. Now what I do not recommend that you do is put it into another composition and then resize it and scale it up past these borders. That's never a good idea to resize footage like that because the quality will degrade significantly. But there's really no comparison. As we look at the original footage here, how it's just dancing all over the place, and then we go back to the finished product, and look at how amazingly stable that bird is. Beautiful. So as you can tell, the tracking engine in After Effects is pretty impressive. And so what we're going to do in the next couple of movies is learn how to track motion. Not just stabilize it, but track motion and then use that data in other places in the program.